Hello everyone and welcome back to our A10C2 quick start guide. Today just following on from the last one where we looked at the JDAM bunker buster, we're now going to look at the wind corrected cluster bombs. So in this case we're going to pick the CBU-105. As normal, link to this mission is in the description. And as normal, when we start up, just going to pause to give ourselves time. So these cluster bombs are guided cluster bomb units, the CBU-105 and 103. 105 is the anti-tank variant. And these aren't GPS guided, uh, but they do have a INS system that feeds off of the plane's INS system to know where they are, and they base their movements on inertial sensors, and so they can correct for wind. It's not as accurate as a GPS, but accurate enough, especially considering these are cluster munitions. So there isn't really much that we need to change on the DSMS page. Under Profiles, we really don't have access to many options. You have to drop them on single drops, have to drop them in CCRP mode. There really isn't anything you need to change in the advanced settings. You can input a specific waypoint ID if you wish, but now we're just going to be leaving all of these settings as default. What you may want to do though is change where the bombs deploy their submunitions. To do that we need to go to the inventory page. So we've got our six CBUs here. To edit them we click on one of their positions. We need to confirm this is still a CBU-105. If you've forgotten, it will be displayed what the previously entered settings were here. So we go to CBU, CBU-105, and now we've got the specific settings. Got the fuse setting, can leave that alone. Function time, can leave that alone. But here we've got the height of function. So this is the altitude away from the ground that your bomb will split open into all of its sub munitions. According to Chuck's guide, the ideal height for most applications is 2200 feet. The default is 1800 feet, so you're not far off leaving that on the default setting. But let's just change this for now. So on the scratch pad, we could put in 2200. And we enter that into this OSB here. So now we can see this is 2200. And if we click load sim, this will load it on the two matching stations. So I put that in for five, it will match it to seven. If you have multiple pairs of CBUs, you have to do that independently for each pair. So go to the next one, CBU 105. 2200 is still in the scratch pad for some reason, so I can just push the OSB here, load symmetry, and do the same for our final pair. So now all of my weapons have identical modes, so I can go back to the status page. So now I need to tell the weapons where they're going to hit. And so as normal, waypoint 1 down there is our target waypoint for this mission. Set the TGP here to air to ground mode. If I push China hat forward long command I will slave all current sensors to SPI and my SPI by default will be the steer point. And so here we have it. I'm going to push coolly right long command to set the TGP as our soy. Then I'm going to push the boat forward command to set this to black art. Then China hat forward short command to zoom in. And here we can see our target. This is going to be a cluster munition so we don't have to be overly accurate. I'm just going to put it in the middle of this group here. So I can slew if I want to and push the target management switch up long command to set the TGP line of sight to soy. Then to arm my weapons, go up to, so coolie up short command, sets HUD to soy. I can push the data management switch right command 
to open the weapon profile. Here we can see I've got CBU-105 selected. As is confirmed down here in the DSMS page, we've got these green boxes indicating currently selected weapons. These CBUs use the same symbology as the other JDAMs that we looked at previously. So I want to fly to keep my velocity vector indicator over the vertical full bar. And I want to keep an eye on the range in miles here and my weapon release time in minutes and seconds here. But as I get closer, this little box will expand. I want to fly until the chevron is midway between the expanded box. And then I can press and hold weapon release to drop one of my CBUs. So let's see that in action here. Put it in unpause. So there we can see we have expanded the weapon release area. About 30 seconds from release now. Just have to keep flying this forward. You can see that the range indicator is starting to fall down, getting close to that boxed area. So now I'm within the weapon release region. Just going to get a bit closer, so I'm nicely in the middle, just in case there's any errant gusts. Then press and hold, and we can see there one of our bombs is gone. Just like the GPS guided bombs, these are fire and forget, so I can fully back away now. Now, one thing that you are going to notice with these bombs is when they reach their full point, you're not going to see anything. And you're not going to see anything for a while. And that is because as the bomb gets close to the ground, it does, instead of detonating, it ejects the submunitions, which will travel up a short distance, deploy on small parachutes, and then come back down. So it takes quite a while between weapon release and when the bombs actually go off. But there we can see them starting to go off, starting to see the kill feed filling up with multiple impacts. So there we have it. We can always go in on second target, just move our TGP line of sight, you can see the B cake symbol there moving with it. And we will then launch parameters, so let's release a second bomb, and let's just release a third as well. Put in a lot of things onto that area, and then we just do the same, we fly around, keep an eye on the target area. There's no need to keep an eye on the target area instantly. You can absolutely just be GTFOing at this point. But we can zoom in to look at the pretty pictures. And there we go, it's starting to get our weapons hitting the targets. The more bombs you release on one point, the denser the explosions will be. But very often a single bomb is more than enough to saturate the area. So there we go, very satis satisfying weapons to use. If you have any questions about their employment, do you just leave uh, those down in the description. If you enjoyed this and found it useful, do you consider leaving a like and subscribing? Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video. Until then, hope you all take care of yourselves and each other. Cheers.